Hi. For today's lesson, I wanted to show you what's in my horn toolkit, my first aid kit. Um, I was going to save this lesson for a bit later on, but I've heard that some of you have sticky valves, horns that aren't quite playable yet, so I thought it would be best to do this sooner rather than later so that we can all get to work playing. Um, all right, so the first thing I want to talk about is how to oil your valves. And that might be all that you need to do in order to get a sticky valve working again. So I have two kinds of oil in my toolkit. Um, the first is the lighter valve oil. It's called, well, it's for a rotary valve, which this is what we have on the horn. We have these casings and the valves um, rotate inside the casing when you press down the key. And so they're a little bit different than other, other valves that you might have seen. And so we have a few ways of, of oiling them. The first thing I like to do is just put a few drops on the very back of the valve. So um, I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's where those two little pieces connect. There's a joint there. And the joint falls roughly in between those two rubber stoppers. Um, some older horns might have actual cork stoppers, uh, but most of the horns these days, I think that you're gonna see in schools will have the rubber. So I just put a couple of drops on that little link, the joint between the rubber, there we go. And then just move the valve, move the key up and down and that is something that I do maybe every week. Um, less frequently, I'll take out the valve, or at least the slide that corresponds to the valve. So if you have a sort of a, a sticky first valve, it's not um, moving up and down easily, you might want to just press the valve down and gently pull out the slide and it's important to do that pressing action when you're pulling out the slide so you don't get that popping noise that creates a vacuum and it's not great for the mechanism of the valve. So just try and get in the habit anytime you're pushing it in or taking it out to make sure that you're closing, you're opening the valve, that is not closing. So you're pressing down on the key. So once you've got the slide out, then you can take your rotary valve oil, and this is great stuff because it has that um, dropper, and it's much, it's a lot easier to sort of direct it down through the horn. So I'm just gonna put a couple of drops in each side. You can't really see what you're doing, but you can sort of get a feel for what a couple of drops are gonna feel like. You don't wanna end up with half the bottle gone. And again, just keep working, working the rotary valve so that it gets, it gets down into the mechanism. Then replace the slide and remember, push the key down and back in it goes. So that is how I would oil the valves. And then the other, the other place, uh, let's see, that's my thumb now. Um, the other place where we should not neglect is in the actual tops of the valves and just a drop or two right on the top. I don't do that very often, but it's also a good thing to um, a good thing to know and this is going to be hard to show you on the camera but um, if you can see those tiny little notches, there's an inner circle and there's an outer circle. And if you push your, if your valve is not depressed, it's not pressed down, then the first notch should line up with the notch on the outer circle. Press your valve down and the second notch should then line up with the valve on the outer circle. And that means your rotary valves are aligned. So every time you press it, press it down, it will fully open, it won't just go part way. So that's a good sign if the notches line up. I hope you can see that. Now, 
if you're still experiencing problems, you probably have to clean the valves. And that, uh, I've never actually taken apart a rotary valve. I'm too nervous to do that. I know that there are tinkerers out there who are braver than I am who've done it and clean them, but I just, I send my horn off to be cleaned. And that, um, that usually solves any issues that I might have. Um, and then the other thing you can do, and I'm, I apologize for not being able to show you, but if you have um, a horn, it's called a snake, it's a long, um, sort of a wiry cleaning brush about this long. I don't actually know where mine is at this moment, so I'm not setting a great example for you, but it has um, a little brush on either end, and it just goes through. You can sort of, while you're running a little bit of water through the horn, you can give it a bath. Um, water's not gonna hurt it. Um, so run a little bit of water through the lead pipe. And then you can take your snake and push the first end right down through the lead pipe. And it's gonna come out there. So as long as you've taken out the proper tuning slide, your snake then has an exit. So you just pull, 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 and out it comes, it'll come popping out and probably be covered in goo, but that's good because then the goo means, it means the goo is not in your horn anymore. Um, now, I just want to caution you though, that you, if you're getting a snake or if you're using a snake, make sure it's not a trumpet snake. They look almost identical, but those trumpet um, bristles, the, the actual brush, they're a little bit bigger and they have been known to get stuck inside French horn lead pipes because look how tiny our lead pipe is. So make sure you're using the one that's designed specifically for the horn and you should have no trouble. If not, you might have to get um, some extra help <laughs> getting that out. I have had to do that before with students at band camp. All right, oh, and then, then this is the mouthpiece brush. Um, I think these, you can buy these everywhere. And this actually is just a little bottle brush. I think I got it at a kitchen store. So um, that's just to sort of keep your mouthpiece clean. It's like brushing your teeth. You don't want stuff to build up inside your lead pipe. Um, oh, and speaking of brushing your teeth, you probably want to make sure you've brushed your teeth before you start playing your horn. Um, and then this, wind players will probably have some key oil in there, it might have key oil in their case, I don't know, but this is what I use if I have a specially noisy valve, like really clunky sounding. Sometimes a few little drops of this, again, on the back of the valve will help cut down with noise. If it doesn't, um, it could mean that you have um, uh, the, the rubber bits or cork, more likely cork, have worn down so much to the point that um, when you're pushing the valve, it's knocking metal against metal and not metal against cork anymore. So that just means you'll have to replace those stoppers, the cork or the rubber. Um, oh, and then, very important, if you have a horn that has strings on the back of the valves, and all professional models will, um, then you're going to need to have an emergency kit for replacing a string in case it breaks. And I have had a string break. I've had it break in the middle of a concert, which hasn't been fun. Um, but if you have this tough nylon cord that you can buy, I think at Long McQuaid, um, it will probably never break on you. So in the old days, I used to use fishing twine or just, you know, little bits of thread. No, use the stuff that's designed for um, horn valves. And then you're gonna need a tiny little screwdriver um, and some scissors to cut it. And then, then comes the part that I'm not gonna show you because um, there's a YouTube video that's 10 times better than me showing you. Um, and I think I used it the last time I taught this class. So I'm gonna look up the link to that and 
that YouTuber is going to show you how to change a string on your valve. Um, so, the, yeah, I, I, love how, I love how you can adjust the strings so that you can adjust the height of the valve, of the key, I mean, so that if you have a, a larger hand and you want them just a little bit higher, you can do that. Um, school models, a lot of the earlier ones will have, instead of string, they'll just have a metal bar and there's nothing, you, you, they're not adjustable and they're often quite noisy. So um, just check out your instrument, see which, which one it is you have. And if yours does have strings on the back, you want to follow, follow along with this video. Um, and I hope you won't need to change a string. I think I spent the first two classes of horn maintenance 2018 just changing strings and and greasing. Oh yeah, we haven't talked about the grease yet. Um, anyway, it, we could spend a long time on this, but I wanted to do this earlier on so that you're all you know all set to play in the next couple of days, hopefully. Um, and then the last thing is the slide gel. You can use the um, this anything that they sell at the Ben at the Long McQuaid is fine. That I think that Yamaha is it. It's sort of it comes in a little squirty thing and it's pinkish, that works fine. I've used straight up lanolin before and that works really well. Um, so you don't, you can just get it at the pharmacy, just get, you know, ask them for a little container of lanolin. Um, and this is the Hetman, again, Hetman. Um, and it's, it's great. It, it even comes in a heavier version, which is super gooey. It's like melted marshmallows for, uh, a slide that just won't stay in place, but this stuff, this is this works great on my horn. Um, so I I have just put some on, but I'll sh I'll show you again what I would do. It's just you take your slide and just a few drops. A little goes a very long way. Just a few drops, and then back in it goes. And you'll just sort of work it in and work it out. And you want it to be, have a, a lot of holding, staying power so that when you've tuned your horn and everything has its, you know, its spot that you want it to be in, that it will stay put. And, and yeah, so that's, that's sort of the action of a well lubricated slide. So um, I hope this helps and I hope everybody has playable horns in the next couple of days and I'll see you soon.